Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul Gordon, and I'm with iState.tv, and this is a very special news watch. This is breaking effing news. I don't know how many times we're going to do breaking effing news, but this definitely is worthy of being called breaking effing news. Local school to create patriotic world citizens. That's right. Patriotic world citizens and it does it in the name of a good citizen contract this this episode was the fruit of a document which we'll get to that my daughter brought home to me from the school district that she goes to now i i do not advocate for public schooling i you know full disclosure i am not pro government schooling uh, not not in the least sense of the word i do practice peaceful parenting and my daughter is is of an age that i believe that she can make a decision for herself and my beliefs were different when she first began school and my beliefs changed after she had been in the school system for a while so she has been given the choice to well unschooling is is what i would really rather that she chose but if i'm doing peaceful parenting and i believe in unschooling i'm don't believe that uh, it's going to be very fruitful for me to pull her out of the school system against her will if she really doesn't want to go outside the school system it's probably not going to go very well and i'm not actually sending her the message that I'm actually hoping that she gets. The the values that I would like to transfer to my daughter, should she choose to accept them, the values of 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 uh, basically the values of of individual liberty, if you will. But I, I won't get too 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 bogged down by that. But before I get into the document, I I, I want to get into all of this is uh it, it's uh what initially triggered all of this was the 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 word that popped up there were many words that really triggered the response that you're gonna see here but the word that that leapt out at me that I said okay no 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 that's uh, that's that's way too far I, I've got to respond to this and that's the word patriotic so before I get to the document, I want to get to this. Uh, I am at the website modernnotion.com. And the article here is, um, why are these American school children performing the Nazi salute? Well, that's an interesting question. By the way, Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag of the United States of America, big, big part of, of my daughter's uh, daily morning routine when she goes to the, the government-run school. So the, the article uh, says the... The, the the Pledge of Allegiance has been around since the late 1800s. And uh, what you see here, if you, if you see there, the, both the picture they're showing and the picture that, that I have uh, right there, that looks like a Nazi salute, does it not? Looks really, really like a Nazi salute. Well, according to this article, this stream site is actually children performing what was called the Bellamy Salute, and it was completely a normal thing to do back in the early 1900s. How did this come about? Well, in 1890, uh, 1892, a man by the name of Daniel Sharp Ford, owner of the popular magazine, The Youth's Companion, had flags installed in every classroom across the country to spread American, wait for it, wait for it, patriotism. Then, to push this patriotism further, he decided to have one of his staff members, Francis J. Bellamy, write a pledge that the children could recite every morning before class. Bellamy eventually created the Pledge of Allegiance that we're all familiar with today. Now, I want to add here the, the One Nation Under God was, was, was actually added uh, in the 50s. But it didn't originally say One Nation Under God. Despite the pledge's success, Bellamy saw a problem. The children looked super weird. <laughs> super weird, the article says. Super weird. Uh, maybe creepy. Maybe very, very creepy. It looked unnatural. It looked creepy. It Why, it looked like maybe something that you would see uh, in North Korea, maybe. Well, actually, this doesn't really make it better. So 
So, so he decided to create what was known as the Bellamy Salute, which involved the children covering their hearts with their right hands and then stretching their arms out toward the flag. Yeah. Everything was going fine until the mid-30s when the news of Hitler's rise to power started to spread around the world. Pictures and newspapers were showing thousands of supporters supporting, performing the Bellamy salute and saying, Heil Hitler! Now, they didn't get rid of it right away. It took, it took a decade. Uh, or so over the course of the next day, the decade, the Bellamy salute soon became the hot-button issue in America. And eventually... Congress could ignore the problem any longer and decided in 1942 that the Pledge of Allegiance, which is interesting. Okay, it, it was in the 30s that you saw Hitler's rise, and they immediately were doing the Bellamy salute. Now, a little interesting factoid is the, uh, the American progressives uh, were not exactly anti-Hitler early on. So is it a coincidence that it wasn't until America actually went to war with Germany, that Congress decided to get around to changing the way you do it. So they, they nixed the Bellamy salute, and they replaced it with the hand over the heart. Now, folks, just so you know, this was, at one point, this was thought of as good, this little Bellamy salute. And now, the, the essential trappings of the whole thing, of uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. You now, now you stand with your heart over your hand. Other than that, the essential trappings are the same. They added the under God in the 50s. But it's essentially the same. And it was intended. It was intended to transfer this notion of patriotism onto the next generation. Now, with that said, I am going to simply read to you the document the document that my daughter brought home with her from school really just just a couple days ago the unnamed school district in partnership with the family and the community strives to promote good citizens and community-minded students. The Student Code of Conduct is a document to assist in that endeavor. Our framework for citizenship seeks to build a safe, caring, and respectful learning community based upon four components. Universal values. Courage, empathy, friendship, honesty, integrity, kindness, loyalty, patience, patriotism, persistence, Respect of others and self, responsibility, self-discipline, tolerance, trust, work ethic, excellence, internal push and desire to make a positive contribution to the community and society. Global understanding, to develop respect and appreciation for all people and beliefs, valuing the various cultures, races, and and individual characteristics of our schools. Community service. To become actively involved in activities that improve our community. These four guiding principles promote the education of the whole child. Our goal is to support and teach these four components through your child's education in the unnamed school district. We ask that parents, guardians, review the code of conduct, especially the information that speaks to our framework for citizenship. All members of our community should be aware of those behaviors that are contrary to good student behavior and could lead to consequences as related to the code of conduct. Your signature and your child's signature below. Indicate that you have been given a copy of the student code of conduct for your review. Parent. The parent understands that participation in his, her student's education will help his, her achievement and attitude. Therefore, the parent 
will continue to carry out the following responsibilities to the best of his or her ability. Volunteering in their child's classroom. Required. Supporting their child's learning. Required. We're going to go through each of these little paragraphs here, and we're going to have something to say about each paragraph. Let's start off with the first part here. The school district, the unnamed school district, in partnership with the family and the community, family, what, what family, what, what, what partnership are you talking about? What, what, I, I, you're, 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 you're proposing a whole code of conduct. And there was no conversation with the family or the community. This agenda came to us, this initiative, whatever you want to call it. This came to us fully formed. And what are they striving to do here? Strives to promote good citizens. Good citizens. That word citizen, that means someone who is pro-state, pro-government. That is, well, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna argue that this this is essentially promoting the state, promoting government is 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 what it's all about. That's what this curriculum is about. It's not about teaching, reading, writing, arithmetic. It's about creating good citizens, i.e people who support government, who support the state. What a coincidence. The public school, which is run by the state, is working to create people who support the state. It's as if Burger King had stepped in and began running our schools and they developed a program that was designed to promote people who would eat at Burger Burger King when they grow up. The Student Code of Conduct is a document to assist, to assist in that endeavor. Item number two here. Our framework for citizenship seeks to build a safe, okay, what do you mean by safe? If you're talking physically safe, that's one thing. Are you talking safe spaces? Are you talking safe from controversial ideas? What do you mean by safe? Caring and respectful learning community based upon four components. There you go with that word community. In and of itself, community is quite an innocuous word. But, well... It had some other meanings to it. Let's let's go to the next part here before we... We'll probably address the community issue as we go along. So, we're going to get to the first item. The first... The... Let's go back here. What do they call them? The... The four components. So, we're going to get to the first component of four. Universal values right away. Right away, you should have all kinds of alarms going off. Universal values, there are no such things as universal values. Who are the ad wizards who came up with this marketing program? How could you possibly imagine that anyone can design a curriculum around something called universal values? Just in case you don't know, value, value is always subjective. When you're talking universal values, by the way, yeah, that's that's the kind of language that the uh, statist uh, commies and socialists use. They believe in, in universal values. The right, You might want to Google the labor theory of value, which fancies that you can absolutely put an objective scientific definition to value. Now, 
I'm not saying that that's an exact correlation here, but right away when you see that phrase, universal values, you know there's something afoot. And if you're talking educators, educators who fancy that they know what's best for your child, if we go back here to they uh, they are building a safe, caring, and respectful learning community. They know what exactly they mean by safe and exactly what they mean by caring and respectful. And they're the professionals. If the professionals are telling you right away that there is such a thing as universal value, you need to not trust that professional because they don't know what the hell they're talking about. There is no such thing as a universal value. If there was such a thing as a universal value, then the struggle for man to define morality in an objective way would be done. But it still continues. No one has yet to produce an objective definition of morality. Which, by the way, morality and values, they're, they're almost synonymous with one another. So what, what do they identify as universal values? Well, there's, there's courage. There's empathy. Courage. Courage. Who defines courage? What, who defines empathy? I mean, I understand if I could say, you know, courage. You know, you're, you, you have fear and you face fear and you, and you go forward, uh, which in and of itself might be great. But courage, I mean... You know, uh, uh, an Islamist is courageous. So is it, is it necessarily a good value? Is it really necessary that an Islamist, if an Islamist is courageous, do we consider that a good value? Probably not. Empathy. Friendship. 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 Who, who are you to tell my child that my child needs to have friends? I mean, sure. I mean, by and large, I'm not necessarily against my child having friends, but 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 is it really the business of the school that was originally that the, the, it is designed to to teach your children R R R reading writing arithmetic? This is way beyond reading writing arithmetic. Now it wants to condition your children to believe that they absolutely need friendship, and that well you know what that's a subjective interpretation. Honesty, okay, uh, integrity. Kindness, loyalty, loyalty, loyalty in and of itself is not a good thing. I, well, I, mean, I, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say loyalty in and of itself is not a good thing. I want to say that, that loyalty is not necessarily a good thing. If you're loyal to Hitler, is it a good thing that you're loyal to Hitler? If you're loyal to a state system that routinely locks people up and throws them in jails, threatens them with lethal force who have not actually hurt anybody else, if you're loyal to that system, that is not a good thing. Loyalty is not always good in and of itself. And why? Why do I want a state-run institution to teach my child to be loyal? Because what do you think the state-run institution is going to teach my child to be loyal to? The state-run institution. And then there's patience. And then we get to this loaded word, patriotism. Patriotism. Yeah. So in Soviet Union, when they taught them to be loyal to Mother Russia, is that a good thing? Was patriotism is a good thing? Was it? Was it? Is 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 it is it really do you do you really want it to be the job of your school to teach your child to be patriotic? Is that a value? Is that a universal value? I can tell you one thing. Universal means all. Across the board, I can tell you that patriotism is most assuredly not a universal value. I, for one, do not value patriotism. I don't value patriotism because you know what patriotism essentially is? And I'm not saying you can agree with me or, you know, or whether, whether you agree with me or disagree with me. I'm making a point here that this is not a universal value. Patriotism is nationalism. 
If you are all on board with nationalism, then you go ahead and you sign this document with joy, with joy in your heart. Now, I'll get to why it is that I'm not going to sign this document, why I have not chosen to, to, to sign this document, even though the document doesn't really fully say, it, it, well, it doesn't, it, it isn't demanding that you agree with all these things. But be that as it may, what they are telegraphing here is that the, the one of the purposes of this curriculum is to raise your child for you to, to basically look to the United States of America and celebrate the United States of America. Now, I, I'm sure many of you probably don't have a problem with that. But what about the, the parents that, that don't necessarily want their child to celebrate the United States of America? Is, is, is it necessary? Do we, do we have some sort of, 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 of citizenship code? Uh, a, you know, we have to take a loyalty oath. Does a loyalty oath, doesn't that sound kind of like something maybe that happens in North Korea? Is is because is is that what we're advocating for here? Because I'm under the impression that that is exactly the road that we're going down here. Now, I am as I get into this, I'm going to I'm going to plant a little seed right now. When when I'm saying nationalism and I'm saying patriotism, watch it, watch it, because this is a curriculum that has a word that we'll eventually get to a phrase that we'll we'll, we'll eventually get to that shows that this. This goes well beyond nationalism. Nationalism is the gateway. Nationalism opens up the door for a certain segment of Americans. I'll get to that. So then we have respect of others. Okay, I don't necessarily think that's bad, but I don't, I don't for one, <laughs> in any way, shape, or form, teach my daughter that you just respect everyone. You don't. Respect is something that is most assuredly earned. Now, just because I don't, don't, don't respect someone doesn't mean that I'm going to treat them rude or, or, or mean or, or anything, but, but I'm not going to give just anyone respect. You're going to have to demonstrate that I would want to give you respect. I'm willing to bet that they're not teaching that. What they are teaching is blind respect, and I would be willing to bet what they're really teaching is especially is, is respect for people in authority because that's an essential part of, of creating, basically creating future supporters of the state, of the government. Uh, responsibility, self-discipline, tolerance. Well, there's a loaded word, tolerance. And if, 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 you, if you come at it from a perspective of what I've seen traditionally from what you know, the American left, if you will, uh, never mind that left and right are really not adequate terms to describe the different camps that, that, take, that take on those identities. I'm not going to get into that. But if you, if you come at it from the American left perspective, tolerance is synonymous with acceptance. It means not, not, it means far more than, hey, I, I recognize that if you want to believe that, that's your right to believe that. No, it, it, it's not just that you recognize that it's someone's right to believe that or someone's right to live a certain lifestyle that you might not uh, necessarily approve, but that you must approve. You must affirm. For the left, tolerance means affirmation. And a little bit later on, I'm going to get to why it is that, uh, well, tolerance is... I, I would put I would wager a fair amount that when they're using the word tolerance here, they mean it from a quote unquote left perspective. So what they're essentially talking about is teaching your child to accept, not just tolerate, but accept trust and work ethic, work ethic. Now, I know many of you who may stumble upon this video or uh, whether you're watching the live stream version or uh, the, live the video, I know many of you probably embrace that phrase, work ethic. It's a, it's a, it's a uniquely American phrase, work ethic. And it's, it, it, it's, 
it, it creates a belief in work for work's sake alone is, is where it leads to. It's The idea is that, you know, hard work is a reward in and of itself, which is total malarkey. I don't want my child to grow up with a work ethic. I want my child to grow up being self-reliant, self-sustaining, uh, responsible. I want my child to own their beliefs and understand why they believe what they believe. I want my child to grow up to to not take from others, to not harm others. That does not require a work ethic. If my child can figure out a way to make it in this world, in which they're not, they're not violating others personal space, personal property, whatever the case might be. If my child could figure out a way to make it in, the, in this world at the level that my child uh, uh, wants to live without having to do hard work, I, I embrace that. I completely embrace that. But you have a system, a system that is endorsed by, created by, assured by, the state, the government, that puts human beings in a position where if they want to have the kind of life that they've kind of been to some degree conditioned to want to have, they're going to have to work long, hard, arduous hours for years and years and years and years and years. So the work ethic, it keeps people compliant. It keeps people comfortable with this idea that you have to work 50, 60 hour work weeks for years and years and years to make it in this world. It, it, it puts people in a position where they accept that, that they live in a climate in which if, if you have a husband and a wife, father and a mother, you have two parents, that, that, that both of them have to work. And hey, that's great when both of them have to work because that means that the state has all the more power to to influence your child, which is which is really that's exactly what they want to do. And that's exactly what's going on here with this with this this twisted document here. Let's get to the uh, I guess this is the let me see this. This is the oops. This is the the third or the second what's this called? The four components. This is the second component. Global understanding. To develop respect and appreciation for all people and beliefs. Now, there you go. They're, they're right there. Respect and appreciation. See, appreciation, that's the key. I don't necessarily want my daughter to appreciate all people, and I certainly don't want her necessarily to appreciate all beliefs. If she wants to, if she chooses to appreciate all people and all beliefs, that's her business. But appreciate? No. Respect? No. Not all people and not all beliefs deserve respect. None whatsoever. Well, I'm not... There are some that do deserve, uh, I would I would argue subjectively that there are some that do deserve uh, respect uh, and appreciation. And, and even the ones that I would define and say, hey, yeah, that person deserves respect. Those, that, those people deserve respect. That belief deserves respect. Uh, you don't necessarily have to agree with that. I, for one, am not in any way, shape, going or form going to respect the uh the the belief system of Pol Pot, who thought that it was a good idea to go out and murder more than half of his population, cleanse his his country of undesirables, so he could try to build a workers' paradise. I do not believe at all that that person, that the and the people that that agreed with him and worked with those people. They don't deserve any respect. I will not appreciate them. I will not respect their beliefs. I will not re uh, appreciate their beliefs. So global understanding, that one, that really shows you. When they say tolerance, they mean it from the American left definition of the word tolerance. And global understanding, 
It's important that you remember that when we, we when we get to another point down the road here. Uh, this, I, I guess I'll talk about a little bit here. When we're talking about patriotism and nationalism, I, I describe to you that this opens a door. It is, it is designed to some degree to uh, appeal to the American left and the American right. So the American right, for instance, they see patriotism. And they're like, yeah, man, uh, totally. Flag, rah, 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 you know, America the great, make America great again, you know. They they love that, but the, but that's not where 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 when 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 this <laughs> curriculum basically that we're describing here, which we'll get to the actual name of the curriculum. Interestingly enough, the they don't get to the name of the curriculum until uh, sometime. Uh, well, we'll get to it. When you when you when you look at the curriculum, it's actually designed. It's it's it 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 starts off. With the United States of America, it starts off with loyalty to America, loyalty to the state of America, but it goes beyond that. It, it, it takes your child into the United States flag system, if you will, and then it, it, it brings your child beyond that. When they're talking patriotism, when they're talking good citizen, they're talking patriotism, a nationalism that is international in scope internationalism that's what they're really talking about and when they talk good citizen they're talking world citizen that's what they're attempting to create here so we get to the next one here the last one community service to become actively involved in activities that improve our community. Community service to become actively involved in activities that improve our community. This isn't the, the, the R's. This isn't reading, writing, arithmetic. This is this is social engineering. And they, they, they seek to socially engineer your child to come to understand that the community is bigger and more important than your child self. Very, very little of the language that you're seeing here is geared at all towards the individual. Let's let's just uh, let's just go back here to the uh, you know the first part here. In partnership with family and community, strives to promote good citizens and community-minded. Community, community, community. Now let's get to the framework for citizens. Seeks to build safe, caring, respectful, learning community. Community, community, community. The universal values, courage, empathy, friendship, honesty, integrity. All of this, uh, we're, we're, we're going to get to respect of others and self. Okay, respect of self. Okay, there you go. Self-discipline. Self-discipline to what end, though? It's very clear when you're talking about the self, it's always related to the community. This program, this curriculum is not designed around your child. This is a program that is not designed to equip your child with the tools to make their own decisions, to define their own lives lives and live them as they please. This is a curriculum designed to teach your child, to condition your child, to brainwash your child that community is, is the most important thing. Above and beyond the self, the community is what matters. And that's why that la that last uh, that that last one means so much in the context. I mean, in and of itself, community service to become actively involved in activities that improve our community. I, I, a lot of these things, in and of themselves, may seem innocuous, but when you start to frame them all together, you start to see the underlying purpose behind this code. These four principles promote the education of the whole child. Bells, bells, bells going off. Exactly what does that mean? Our goal to support and teach these four components through your child's education in the unnamed school district. What exactly is the global child? Well, when you Google it, this site comes up first. This is 
hopefulchildeducation.org. And it describes the tenets of Whole Child here. Each student school, each student enters school healthy and learns about and practices a healthy lifestyle. Whatever a healthy lifestyle means, you get to determine exactly what that means. Each student learns in an environment that is physically and emotionally safe for students and adults. Okay, physically safe? Okay, that's kind of self-explanatory. What does emotionally safe exactly mean? Or more new, or by, by whose criterion are you defining emotionally safe? Each student is actively engaged. <laughs> I clicked on it here. Each student is actively engaged in learning and is connected to the school and broader community. Why do I want my student necessarily connected to the broader community? Why would that be something that the school would be working towards? And unless, of course, I mean, if you're talking about on a voluntary capacity, that's one thing. But this is part of the curriculum. Each student has access to personalized learning and is supported by qualified caring adults. Okay, great. I have no issue with that. Each student is challenged academically and prepared for success in college. What college? Are you talking about the colleges of today and uh, what's emerging from them with the uh, uh, with all the, uh, the safe spaces and ch basically training our children that if you don't like an opinion that you have a right to shut it down, that you... You, you, if your feels are hurt because somebody has an opinion that you don't like, that somehow that means you could shut them down. Are you talking about preparing them for that type of college? Now, they mentioned ASCD. Uh, it goes here and describes launched the whole child initiative was launched in 2007. And it's an effort to change the conversation about education from a focus on narrowly defined Academic achievement to one that promotes the long-term development and success of children. On on whose authority, on by whose definition are you determining what success is? Because success is wildly different from person to person. This is there is an assumption here that there's some universal understanding of success, and that doesn't exist. Through the initiative. ASCD helps educators, family, community members, and policy makers move from a vision about educating the whole child to sustainable collaborative action. Collaborative action. What the heck? What? Why is that part of the part of this curriculum? Part of this program? Why? Why should your child feel compelled to be part of a collaborative action? This is basically your 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 garden variety collectivism. This is this is what state socialism is built around. This is what state communism is built around. This is what state fascism is built around. The idea that the individual is subverted because they're their 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 primary function is to meet the needs of the community to be part of the community this is not what america was sensibly found on this is this is not individual liberty kind of stuff this is this is something completely different and exactly who is the the ASCD the ASCD is a global community that's right it's global it's a global uh, uh, globally focused. This is international. You want to talk about globalism? It's literally here. This is it. When they say connecting to the community, well, to a certain degree, they mean the local community, but but really they mean in the overall to the global community. They're talking about creating, an, in essence, a global citizen. ASCD is a global community dedicated to excellence in learning, teaching, and leading, comprising 115,000 members, superintendents, principals, teachers, and advocates from more than 128 countries. The ASCD community also includes 51 affiliate organizations. This is this is basically like the United Nations, whether well, or not directly affiliated with the United Nations. So it's I'm using it in a metaphorical sense. This is like the United Nations has essentially gotten its it the camel's nose it's the camel's nose under the tent 
This is internationalism, globalism being introduced to, in this case, the school district that my daughter goes to. Our diverse nonpartisan membership is our greatest strength, projecting a powerful, unified voice to decision makers around the world. Okay, and uh, let's see, the ASCD, the Association for Supervision and Curriculum Development. That's what this is. It's Association for Supervision and Curriculum Development. Curriculum development is the key phrase here. Curriculum development is now going beyond teaching your children the R's, you know, reading, writing, arithmetic. And now it's going into social engineering. It is assuming the role that parents, that family, that friends, that your, your actual community around you uh, perform. Now the schools are taking a more proactive uh, role in not just teaching your children reading, writing, arithmetic, but teaching your children how and what to think. They are essentially raising global citizens who think and act a certain way. The association provides expert and innovative solutions in professional development, whatever. Uh, let me just go here to meet the ASCD executive leadership team. Uh, there's, there's Sir Deborah Delis. What do we know about Deborah Delis? Okay, Deborah Delis, where are you? There you are. Deborah Delis is the executive director. Okay, and and where was she just before this? Let me highlight this here. She was nominated as the U.S. Assistant Secretary of Elementary and Secondary Education by President Obama in January 2012, confirmed by the U.S. Senate on April 27, 2012, and served in that position until 2015. And she served under the controversial uh, U.S. Uh, Education Secretary Arne Duncan, Duncan, under whose watch... Common Core was aggressively introduced and for which this school district, which I won't name, is actually fully engaging in as well. Uh, let's see, Deb here, former superintendent of Cleveland Heights University Heights Schools, confirmed as nation's new assistant uh, secretary of education. And... Then she eventually left the education department to take the helm of ASCD. I'm honored to join this respected association, excited to lead the next phase of ASCD's growth. ASCD is a talented roster of professionals dedicated to success for all educators and loyal members and whatever. So there you go. That's the whole child and that's the organization that's behind it. And really, this only scratches the surface of exactly what the whole child initiative means, what this pamphlet means, this whatever you want to call this, the, this contract means when they're using a word like whole child. And now we get to the wrap up here. We ask that parents, guardians, review the code of conduct, especially the information that speaks to our framework for citizenship. Remember, that's world citizenship. All members of our community should be aware of those behaviors that are contrary to good student behavior and could lead to consequences as related to the code of conduct. Think about the last part of that. Contrary to good student behavior, what is a part of good student behavior? Tolerance. By tolerance, they mean acceptance. Acceptance, they mean respect, acceptance, blind acceptance and blind respect of all peoples and all beliefs. By student behavior, they mean patriotism, loyalty to the flag, pledge of allegiance to the flag. Do not, do not contradict the flag. Do not contradict the state. Do not demonstrate disloyalty to the state. 
Does any of this sound like North Korea? Does any of this sound like 1984? Does any of this sound like Hitler's Germany? Does any of this sound like the Soviet Union to you? Okay, so we don't, as of yet, have secret police that are working to turn in informants and to... We, we're, we're not waking up to find our neighbors suddenly mysteriously disappearing. Okay, so I don't want to blow this out of proportion. But uh, you cannot deny that this aspect is, is not unsimilar to these types of totalitarian regimes. And this is, this is a curriculum that is designed, this is all wrapped around the whole child program designed by the Association for Supervision and Curriculum Development. This is social engineering designed to produce first a child that comes to nationalism and then from nationalism goes on to internationalism. That's what this is all about, folks. And uh, what they are asking us to do, we'll get to the, uh, to, 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 to the part where they're, they're finally asking for the appeal here. Your signature and your child's signature below indicate that you have been given a copy of the Student Code of Conduct for your review. Now, for me, the key phrase there is review. No. I have not been given a student code of conduct for my review. Review means to assess and to give feedback, to say what you think about it. You know, you're not asking for feedback. You're asking for a signature, a signature that sends a message to your child. And you're probably not even aware of the message that you're sending. The message that it's sending to your child is, I approve. I, 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 I think this is a good thing. I, you know, even if you're not saying I approve, I think this is a good thing. It's a normalizing of something that should not be normal. If this truly is the land of the free, the home of the brave, is this truly is the nation that was built upon the idea of individual liberty? then this would not be considered normal. This would be considered way above and beyond the pale. The parents would be revolting in the streets, but no, not a freaking word from the parents because it's normal. It's I grew up saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I grew up believing it was a normal thing to be patriotic. The sacri I was given the conflicting information, but here, it's, you know, at least when I grew up, I was at least given conflicting information. I was given individual liberty, and I was also given, you know, you know, greater, you know, to, to, to sacrifice yourself for your nation is the greatest and most noble ideal possible. Very, 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 very uh, conflicting worldviews here. But now this curriculum, the whole child curriculum, it, it dispenses with the myth altogether. They're not even hiding that it's, it's not about individual liberty at all. It's all wrapped around the community, and it will take it out in its, it's like a pebble that's been thrown into the middle of the water, and your child has no idea where the ripples lead to. The first ripple out is just the community. Second ripple out, hey, it, might, it might be your county. It might be your state. The third, fourth ripple out, well, that's the United States of America, a pledge of allegiance. But then that last ripple, that last ripple, that's the world. That's where this is headed. And I have this little part here, the, the parents. Uh, this, is, this is not in the same document. This is the second document. This is actually, it gives a little bit more information of what their, 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 their good citizen crap is. Uh, and, and most of it on its surface, it kind of it doesn't really tell you much. But, but I thought this, these parts were here. Uh, th this was pretty important because this is the part that the parent is agreeing to. Now, you're not agreeing to this by signing this document. Let's be sure. The only thing that you're agreeing to by signing this document, if we go back here, is 
that uh, you've been given a copy of the Student Code of Conduct for your review. No, no, I've been given a copy for me to 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 blindly stamp my approval on, or at least my my complacency with. And by the way, this document, uh, this document needs to be signed. I actually, uh, unfortunately, my my daughter signed this document. I, I. I, I'm not aware, I don't believe that my wife signed this document, so only she signed this document. I did not sign this document, and I wouldn't sign this document. Uh, but she did say that uh, there was one student who hadn't signed the document, and the teacher stopped everything to call that child up to make sure that that child signed that document. I am telling you, this isn't some innocuous uh, uh, little thing. This, this, this is... What they're saying is this is what their whole school curriculum is built around. It's not built around the three R's. It's not built around reading, writing, arithmetic. It's not built around equipping your child to be able to make their own decisions. It is about socially engineering for a desired outcome. And that outcome is that you will have a child who is loyal to the state, loyal to the international community, understands that it is the community first and foremost. The individual is simply there to better the community. Th that's state socialism. That's state communism. Whatever, that's state fascism. Uh, they're, they're all very different. They're, they have a they have some things in common. And one of the things that they all have in common is a belief that it is first and foremost about the community becoming better and better. And that the individual themselves are only important in as much as they relate, as they enable the community as a whole to become better. And it's a small number of social engineers, regulators, educators legislators who are going to to come up with the plan who are going to define what that community is what, what that community means so at the end of the day we get to this last part volunteering this is this is what 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 it means for the parents uh, these are these are the requirements volunteering in their child's classroom and then it says required that doesn't sound orwellian to you a little uh a little uh, uh <laughs> a little little contradictory volunteering is now something that's required that's not double speak supporting their child's learning required now remember supporting their child's learning what does that mean that means that you are supporting your child being conditioned, being indoctrinated, being engineered to become not their their in original selves, not their 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 unique selves, not to define success in their way, not to to be equipped with the tools that enable them to to teach themselves and make their own decisions. No. The school is not there to equip their child with anything. The school is there to turn your child into something. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if you think this is a Democrat thing, it's not. It's a Democrat. It's a Republican thing. Because back in 1885, if you would have tried to put this through the school system in 1885, I guarantee you, whether you were a Democrat or a Republican, you wouldn't have supported it. It would have been like, are you crazy? That's like, that's so alien to what America is. Now, never mind the degrees to which America may have been in, <laughs> not consistently living their values, they still, there was at least a significant part of them that held on to these values, the idea of individual liberty, of, of the individual being the most important element in a society. And that's all changed, folks. So let me wrap this up. This is not a Republican or Democrat issue. 
this isn't about maybe maybe if you're listening to this you 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 don't see a, a problem with patriotism or nationalism you know you're for it and um, maybe if you're listening to this you, you don't you don't see a problem with 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 global citizenship you don't you don't see a problem with teaching our children that the community comes first this document claimed from the beginning this document claimed that one of the four components of their framework for citizenship and honestly folks the framework for citizenship is, is not what it is. The whole program is the whole child program. That's what that's what this is. This school is demonstrating, making it very clear that they are part of this group, that they, they're they're working with the uh, the the A the ASCD in the whole child program and they claim they claim that all they are doing is they're just teaching universal values here and there it's the kind of values that we all want our kids to have and you know the 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 opinions of the kids they don't enter into this at all they presuppose that every human being walking on the planet Earth believes that nationalism is good, that patriotism is great, that that coercive enterprises, that's my phrase for what, what, what state government is. It's essentially, it's a coercive enterprise. It's a business, but it's a business that offers a service or a product that you have to buy. If you don't buy it, they'll send out guns to make sure that you buy it. And if you continue to resist them, they will kill you. That is a coercive enterprise. I am not for it. Many other people aren't for it. And certainly, even among those that are for it, they're not for a coercive enterprise that takes on the role that it does, where it is basically invaded every single part of our lives. And you might believe that that's cool, that that's okay. And it doesn't matter if you believe that. Because my point is that to, to, to say that you're teaching universal values is a freaking lie. That, that, that There's a vast number of people who would most assuredly, be, assuredly vehemently agree with the values that the whole child program lays out. It 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 basically attempts to create a, a debate condition where if I am going to oppose them, I have to pretty much say that I'm against universal values. I'm anti-human. Now, the way that I see the world, the way that I see human nature, and based on my own preferences. I would say that the whole child program, by my definition, by my subjective understanding, is singularly and completely anti-human, anti-liberty, anti-reality. They are attempting to socially engineer human beings to be something that at the end of the day, they're just not. They, they just fundamentally are not. Human beings are very, very, very quirky in that we, we have these these two very strong impulses within us. We have a tribal impulse. We like to belong to tribes. We like to belong to groups, if you will, collectives. At the same hand, we also have a, a, a tremendous tendency to want to be our own person, to define our own lives. We are individuals, and I believe we are individuals first and foremost. Cooperation can emerge, but cooperation that begins with a presupposition that the community is first and foremost, and the individual is, is, is second to the community, 
that you are going to end up building systems which fundamentally will never know, will never understand what it is that individuals truly want. It, it, will, it will create a system in which all of the authentic markers that show whether this is something that people like or something that people don't like, they will disappear because the markers will, will be taken away from the individual exchange where, where the rubber meets the road, as it were. When individuals interact on their own self-interest, you get a far more authentic readout of, of what one individual is willing to give another individual for a product or a service. When you create a system where you have a small number of people who have, who have decided what universal values are, you, you must touch every single aspect of human life. You must touch uh, the marketplace. You must touch healthcare. You must touch religion. You must touch philosophy. You must touch politics. You have to touch every aspect of human interaction. And you cannot rely on the individual authentic exchanges to give you a real bellwether for, for what, what really is human <laughs> and what really is something else. And of course, the system, you, you also, you, 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 you automatically create opportunities for the worst of the worst to, to rise in power. When you, when you can put yourself in a position where you're one of the decision makers, you can use that power to, to basically take care of yourself. Because like I said, human beings, they're naturally, they're, they're tribal and they're also individual in nature. So, so long as you have this dichotomy about humanity, whenever you have a system that creates a high degree of power for a small number of individuals, you are going to attract individuals who see an opportunity to seize that power and use it to enrich their own lives at your expense, not just your expense, but, but depending on the type of power that they have, hundreds of other people's expense, thousands of other people's expense, millions of other people's expense, and we've seen it throughout history. So when I see this, I see, I see basically, to me, the whole child program, the whole child program, whether it's fascism, whether it's state socialism, whether it's state communism, and I would argue it's it's not so much state fascism, and I'll I'll get to the difference there. It's 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 either state communism or state socialism, probably state socialism. What whether what, what whether it is any one of those three things. If 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 the whole child program, if this becomes the norm throughout the world. And, you know, it started in 2007, so it's been going on for 10 years. 128 different countries are using this program to one degree or another. And you start to see world citizens raised up. You imagine, you imagine the horrors that a small group of people can perpetrate on the world. Because in the 20th century, we saw... The, 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 the dictators, the, the totalitarian leaders, whether they're fascist, communist, socialists, they were able to wield a very, very powerful machine that, that took what used to be deaths of thousands when you had bad rulers and, and, and elevated it to deaths of millions. Now you're talking about laying the groundwork for something beyond the nation state. As hideous to me as the nation state is, the world state is, is far more chilling. Because if you have a small group of people that, are, that, are, that, that have a hold of the monopoly of violence, such as you have 
the United States of America, China, all the other nation states. Then your ability to kill at, at a scale that, that now now touches billions is is not unrealistic. And that's what we're talking about here. Whatever the intention of the people who have come up with this program, however noble they may believe that they are, they are laying the groundwork for tyranny that will make the 20th century look like, well, they'll make the 20th century look like maybe the 19th century look to the 20th century. Well, that was bad, but you know, you're only killing in the thousands. Yeah, that's what they'll say. Well, the 20th century was bad, but you know, they were only killing in the millions. Now, now we're killing in the billions. And who knows? Maybe that's maybe that's just what these folks want. Because you know, at the end of the day, if the community is the most important thing, then individuals individuals absolutely are expendable. Now, before I leave you, I did tell you that I would explain to you. I, I'll, I'll just touch briefly the difference, such as I see it. I'm, 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 I'm not claiming absolute knowledge here. I hardly ever do that. Uh, between state communism, state socialism, and state fascism. State communism and state socialism are kind of in the same camp. State fascism is its own unique camp, and there are many brands of state fascism, just as there are brands of state communism, state socialism. State socialism is absolutely, well, or excuse me, state communism is absolutely the, the, the state owns all of the means of production. Uh, and, state communi- and state socialism is, the state doesn't necessarily own all of the means of production, but it pretty much dictates the rules of engagement in the marketplace, including to varying degrees uh, price fixing. Uh, deciding that uh, you can't charge too much or you can't charge too little, and oh, oh you know, hev- heavy on regulations. Now, state socialism and state fascism they kind of sound similar in that state fascism is is also it's it the state doesn't own the means of production. The there are individual owners of of businesses, but the individual owners are are. Either they're complete, they're, well, in one way, shape, or form, they're married to the state. They are one in the same. The state doesn't directly own it, but they directly control it. Whether they control the owners of the uh, businesses through force or whether the owners of businesses are also the owners of the state, uh, it, it doesn't matter. But, but there is a key difference. And why I put state socialism in the in the uh, state communism camp and not in the state fascist camp is because state fascism its 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 ultimate goal is to raise up a people to be as best as a people can. Its focus is not on the individual. Its focus is absolutely on the community, however it defines the ultimate community. So you can have you can have international fascism. It can happen. Uh, you can have, uh, uh, but 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 from 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 what I've seen, most mostly fascism is in the nationalist camp. They don't they don't branch out too much. But but I'm I'm sure that they exist. I'm sure that if you were to look up international fa- internationalist fascism, I bet you you'll find something. Uh, but but the key thing with international uh, or with fascism as opposed to communism and socialism. The key thing is, with the fascist, they believe that it is the hero that will lift everyone up. It is the excellent individuals who will lift everyone else up. So they build systems that are designed to identify the extraordinary, give them extra power, extra privileges, whatever you know, you'll call it rights, whatever you want to call it. And it's the heroes that will that will lift everyone up. The 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 communists, the state communists, the state socialists, they believe that what you really need is for everyone to be equal 
It is it is the creation of equality for all, and not just equal opportunity, but equal outcomes. Now, I will say on this site, the the AS what is it here? The 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 ASCD, the uh, Association for Supervision and Curriculum Development. I will say that they were careful when they defined equality that. Uh, they they did they did specifically say equal opportunity, but I can assure you, I I would be willing to bet a fair amount of of money that when you scratch under the surface, that that for them equality is isn't is isn't just equal opportunity. It's it's it is most it would it will most assuredly be as, as confident as I can be. Uh, equal outcome so for the for the, the 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 reason for instance that hitler hated uh the communists was was not that he disagreed with he he, he hitler most assuredly was was not for the free market uh whether you want to call it capitalism free market whatever hitler most assuredly was not for the free market hitler is not a uh he, i i would even say if you want to if, if you want to define capitalism as being uh uh, a, a, a somewhat free market where uh, the most powerful of the powerful get special favors from the government. Uh, Hitler, Hitler didn't even been for that. That that's you know mercantilism, crony capitalism. Hitler wouldn't have even been for that. Hitler would most assuredly be for the state indirectly controlling the means of production, and that's that's what happened in in Nazi Germany. The state absolutely indirectly controlled the means of production it was a fascist economy uh, but but just like the so the, the state socialists and the state communists he used coercion to assure that the state controlled the means of production with the state communists well they did it directly and with the state socialists state socialists they'll do it some combination they'll have some degree of direct state control and and other degrees of indirect state control they're all on on an agreement on that point. The differences between the Nazis and the communists that they despise and they fought like the street battles, uh, even during you know during the Weimar Republic before Hitler rose to power, all these battles that happened. The reason that Hitler hated the communist wasn't because he was a capitalist, but because the communist. Communists didn't understand the will of power, man. Communists didn't understand the hero. The communists, they're a slave mentality. They believe in, in in bringing everyone down to the lowest common denominator rather than recognizing the hero and letting the hero raise everyone else up. That's why Hitler hated commies. And the reason that the commies hated the Nazis was because, well, the Nazis had a totally opposing worldview. Uh, unlike the commies, the commies believed, and by the commies, I mean the state commies, the com they believed that you, it, it is the poor, the downtrodden, the workers, those are the ones that, that you want to make sure that everyone is equal with. Everyone is on par. So it means bringing down the heroes, the, the, the ones who excel, and making sure that they don't do better than the workers. So you can understand why they hated each other so much. And there's other differences as well, but for the purpose of this, the, that's, those are the key points that I'm making. And I would say that what you see with the whole child program, I can't say it with 100% degree certainty, but based on the language that they use, they, they talk about social justice and equality. And they use a lot of the, the buzzwords of... Uh, of state communism, of state socialism, that they are not for lifting up the heroes. They are for bringing everybody down to the lowest common denominator and creating a worker's paradise, in essence, is, is, is absolutely, well, I want to say absolutely, but pretty, pretty certain that that's really what the whole child program is designed to do. At the end of the day, for me personally, I have, I have no love. I have no love for the fascists. I have, I have no love for, for the idea of using coercive power to, to give uh, more favor 
and more resources and more control to the quote-unquote heroes to lift the society up, the community up, the nation up. And I, and I have absolutely no desire to try to purposely bring down the people who are excelling to assure that you have equal outcomes. And so in that process, we end up bringing the community as a whole up to a higher level. For me, I am all about the individual. I call myself a vis provusium. Vis previs. Previs is private. Vis is power. A vis provusium is basically, we believe, I'm the only we. I made up the word. I'm the only vis provusium in the world. But I'm going to say we. I'll use the word we. Why not? Uh, well, okay, I won't. I can't do it. I can't pull it off. I believe that wherever possible, I work to tilt the balance of power between from coercive enterprises towards individuals and free associations. I'm not anti-community. I'm not even anti-collective. I'm anti-coercive collective. I believe that if you really, and, and, and honestly, this is a secondary thing for me, honestly. This is secondary. The idea of, of lifting up all of humanity and making humanity better, I, I don't give a I won't say I don't give a crap about any of that, but that's that's a secondary concern. And and one of the reasons it's a secondary concern is because I believe if you really, really, really want that to happen, okay, first of all, you have to dispel with your preconceived notion of what it means for humanity to be better, to be more elevated. <laughs> you, you have to stop even trying to define what that means. That if you have environments in which individuals increasingly have the power to choose for themselves with the least amount of physical threat from outside of them, that you will much more naturally see humanity evolve, if you will, towards the, the subjectively defined, I'll say, higher version of themselves. And so for that reason, I reject everything about this whole program, the whole child program. And because they added the word review, I reject signing this. I reject signing a document which implied that I had any power whatsoever to review. I reject a document, this, this document that begins by stating that the unnamed school district, in partnership with the family and the community, uh, in partnership, I'm not in partnership with you, buddy. I am in total, absolute, vehement disagreement with everything that you stand for when you chose to adopt the whole child initiative. I am totally against you. I'm against everything that you stand for. So you did not consult with me. There was no partnership going on. So I, right away, you give me a document that starts off with a lie. And then you get to the second lie, the second major lie, universal values. And I have, I have no real input into this. I can't change this. You, you, you've signed your contracts, whatever. Maybe you got some economic benefit out of this. You got grants from this. I don't know. I don't know what kind of benefit you got from this. But I guarantee you, because somebody like me comes along and says this sucks, that you're gonna, you, it really, it really matters. So the review process is a lie. There, there, there's, there's no review, whatsoever. So I won't sign this unnamed school district, and I will be sending this video to unnamed school district. Well, I'm debating that. I may or may not. My daughter goes to this school, so we'll see. We'll see what I decide. At any rate, I've said, I guess I've said everything I can say about this whole thing. And at the end of the day, I definitely let loose a few expletives, a lot of expletives when I first read this document. And I had to wait a few days before I can even make this video because if I had made it early on, this video would have been filled with expletives. 
I have a fundamental disagreement with this school and with the people. When I say this school, I mean the individuals, whoever you are. You, if I knew your names, I would address them. I wouldn't address your last names. I would address your first names. I would call you out. Whoever you are, the individuals within this school district, starting with the school superintendent. I won't say his first name because then you can figure out probably pretty easily the school. Or maybe not. You, Mr. Superintendent, Mr. Assistant Superintendent, all the school principals, all the administrators, all the teachers that are going along with this program, for whatever reason you're going along with this program, you are all to blame. It is you that did this. You, the individuals, only individuals act, and a whole host of individuals chose to act. To be the enforcers, to be the 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 trainers, to be the legitimizers, the educators of a system that is designed to convince my child that she is only valuable in so far as she enriches the community around her, and you lay the groundwork. For, for global tyranny, the, the, the bloodshed of which, if it comes to fruition, will dwarf what we've seen in the 20th century. And that's, I believe, that's how I'm going to end this special. Breaking effing news report from iState. Thank you for watching our iState.TV's News Watch with your host, Paul Gordon. iState.TV offers news and views for people who want to build a state of I, an iState, a state of the one, by the one, for the one. If you like what you see, be sure you like, share, comment, and above all else, subscribe. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter by going to at iStateTV, but you can find all of our links to everything we do at isTV.me. After you subscribe, be sure you hit that bell to get the latest video alerts from the iState YouTube channel, which you can find at youtube.com forward slash C forward slash iState. And if you don't subscribe, if you don't hit that bell, then maybe you should move to Somalia.